going forward anyway. Pavel versus RDU. I'm touching uh, that one, Raven. <laughs> it was a joke. Okay. Um, Power versus RDU, double warrior bands out there, so mainly back to normal, at least for this series, with no crazy warrior builds, no bombs as far as I can see or recall at least. Um, we're going to be the Demon Hunter and Rogues for both players, but as I mentioned uh, just before then, is going to be the Priest for RDU, it's going to be the Druid for Pavel, and Pavel just once again uh, going for this Druid list with that mission of Maligos and Alex Straza, as well as those swipes, so just going for the more of that dragon focus, maybe not as nuts as Psycho, uh, with, with, with the the extra level of, of stuff in there that he had in his druid, but still just uh, a list, I think, that is yet to prove itself for me. Yeah, and I do take a bit of Dolores Umbridge with this uh, Malagos being in the key cards graphic for the Dragon Spell Druid, because I think Malagos is the exciting card, and I think everyone looks at this deck and wants it to be some kind of Malagos OTK thing. It's not. I think more of the key dragon in the deck is the Sarah Unleashed, and Malagos is just another big thing that you get to play after you've ramped a bunch and maybe make a tempo swing uh, with Moonfire and Bog Beam. So I think that's a little bit misleading maybe in the way that the deck plays out, but it's still uh, a pretty interesting twist on the, the classic Spell Druid package. I don't know, maybe this is these are highlighting exciting cards. I don't see anything saying they're key cards anyway. So. Sure, uh, good point. Well made. <laughs> but yeah, RDU is going to have the, again, the Demon Hunter, the Galakron Secret Rogue, even with, you know, the uh, post Nerf Hanar still more than good enough to make the cut, and he is going to have his Alacron Priest, and again, just glancing at it, I think this is probably true outside of almost everyone but Psycho, that he is just running the list, I'll call it, which is just almost maximum two ofs, and then the, uh, you know, four or five legendaries you actually need in the list as well, so very, very standard Priest list, and we get to see it go up against uh, not itself, which is going to be a nice change for us today, <laughs> and, and just see how it continues to do, because one thing I'm looking forward to is now after this week, I think we really will start to see very uh, decent sample size of Priest matchups and see how it is just shaping out and what does it actually beat. And regardless of what people think it beats, what is it just beating at GM level and what's it losing to at GM level? Yeah, so far this week, just based on small sample size of, I believe, 25 games overall, uh, it's underperforming. And I think a lot of people predicted that because, because a lot of people predicted Priest would be common in GM. A lot of people move towards that with their lineups where they said, okay, if everyone's bringing Priest, I want Quest Warlock. I want Highlander Hunter. I want these decks that can beat up on Priest. Um, so we've actually just been seeing Priest running at a 36% win rate overall, making right. it 9 and 16. Um, so it has seemed to struggle just a little bit, but there has been a couple of individual series that's skewing that a little bit. Um, Psycho 03 on Priest, I believe, and then Hunter Ace 03 on Priest as well, although one of those was a mirror. Um, so those two series outside or outside of those two series, then it's a little bit closer to 50, 50. Um, but you, you, you can't really play those games with stats, right? Sometimes stats are just stats yeah. and you have to say priest is kind of underperforming this week. Yeah. And that's the, that's the age old problem that there have been very few decks in even the history of Hearthstone that are deemed, okay, this is the bring for this week. This is the best deck. And it's like almost immortal level, much like warrior now, right? Everyone knows warrior is just almost certainly the bring. But if you don't ban it, you're probably just going to take a loss. And that's just factually true <laughs> based on the stats that we have from Warrior when it's left up. But most decks don't work like that. If you're expecting a certain deck to be highly represented, then you can build a lineup that preys on it, which is also almost the nature of Conquest, the format. And we see that from Priest with all the players going for some of the A more aggressive lists, whether you think Demon Hunter's good enough against Priest or not. That's still a bit up in the air. But you know, we see a lot of uh, Highlander Hunter have a huge increase uh, in the bring rates. And that is one of the, I think, just neutrally agreed upon saying, yes, Highland Hunter is good versus Priest. And then we even see some other lists with some uh, more of that mid-game tech the in there to try and put uh, Priest victory. under some pressure. So we'll see how it plans out. And again, I'm just continually looking forward to the week after the week we cast, right? Because every single weekend, I'm like, right, cool. But then what, what are people going to respond to this weekend with next week? I'm looking forward to that already, but we are ready to go into game number one. Sorry about the slight delay there. But Pavel is going to be on his Demon Hunter, and RDU is going to be on this Priest. So we do get to see this matchup once again. The fires of vengeance burn bright. Pavel with an okay start. Uh, Beaming Psychic is pretty huge early on just to make a threat early that's protected against Penance, protected against Shadow Madness Trade, protected against uh, Breath of the Infinite. 
Those are the big removal tools for RDU. We see that RDU actually has multiple of them already in hand. Hey, yep. I got you, friend. Just being able to dodge the cards you just outlined there uh, is massive because if you can get the good start against Freeze and the start that they can't quite answer, that's when you start putting them on pressure because they suddenly need to do more removal things than they can possibly manage in single turns. And that's where you start to make the gap. Small thing, but good recognition from RDU to uh, eat the 2-2 here as opposed to the Battle Fiend, knowing that, you know, he's a priest. He's not going to be attacking and buffing up the stats of his own Battle Fiend, so just a straight-up 2-2 is better for him. Demons. Demons. I thought, does that have the option to coin hero power with this Satan? He does. He probably wants to hero power regardless of if its other options this turn, so... Looks like he's going to save the coin with two five drops and a skull in hand. I can't overdo it. Yeah, I agree with that. I think if you play Sator coin here, you're almost already conceding the game to Breath of the Infinite at that mm. point. Um, whereas using holding on to the coin here, you can just have a nice turn where you still represent a decent amount of pressure on board. You're a little bit weak to penance. Um, but if RDU just plays penance here and doesn't develop, you're happy just going into Warglaives and then Sator Overseer after that which can line up potentially pretty well against your opponent's Shield of Galakrond. So you end up warglaving their Shield of Galakrond a couple of times and getting a ton of value out of your Sator Overseer later. Yep, and even in some scenarios, if there's a Breath of the Infinite as an answer to that board from Pavel, then he just has Hero Power it's Overseer cool. if in he really just wants to keep all of the coin. Nice and flexible right. there. Even now with the Shadow Weaver means that Pavel's not even going to bother with the coin and going to keep hold of it for a little bit longer in the game. Yep, getting extra minion development here. Very reasonable just to divert from the plan I was outlining. So pretty straightforward shield of Galakron from RDU's side though. Gonna be responded to by the Warglaives, I'm sure. Yep, it's too good not to do, doesn't it? I like this use of the coin though, makes this just a little bit cleaner, saves the swing on the Warglaives. Yeah, still gives him uh, Metamorphosis into Hero Power next turn if he wants to, which then opens up the Skull. Or he can take his uh, Sator Overseer turn if he wants to go down that line, but he still hasn't really done any work in terms of getting a Breath of the Infinite out of his opponent's hand. So I think just straight up damage, and then use your Warglaives to keep the board clear of minions to prevent Apotheosis. Seems like the more sensible way to proceed. Yeah, and this happens quite often that because Demon Hunter can go for that just raw damage output plan. I mean, we saw it in some other matchups this weekend. That you can often just get there if, as you mentioned, you can keep the board clear. And it looks like he's lining up that way for Pavel, even just him having Skull after that Metamorphosis to line up nicely. It means he's going to be able you... to keep pumping forward this damage. Sorry, so since there's a Warglaives in play, he's unlikely to stick a minion. So yes, exactly. I love this. He makes a 6 health minion preloaded with Apotheosis while also getting value out of it. Okay, I mean, obviously the Embalming Ritual is a, <laughs> is a huge nut draw there. But this minion, even if Pavel did have Metamorphosis Hero Power this turn, still requires actual damage to be sunk into it from the Demon Hunter. So this is a pretty guaranteed setup to get some value out of your Apotheosis. I think this is very smart from Marty. Ooh, nice eye beam pickup, though. Mm -hmm. You can use the eye beam to actually finish off the final piece of the reborn there. You can also save twin slices and do it that way. I guess he's already committed chaos strikes, so this makes yeah. sense. Yeah. yeah. Like, that Apotheosis play just functionally healed him for, what, 11, arguably? We're with you. Yeah, with the using of the charge as well, yeah. Yeah. So, Mirror does the job. But the problem is, it only does the job of playing the board. Which sounds like, oh, well, that's pretty good. Well, yeah, but, again, Demon Hunter has access to so much damage. Hard is going to be heavily relying on not only this Galakrond armor, but this Renew as well to keep him afloat. Ooh, oh, it's so much damage. 
It's an absurd Honestly, amount so, of damage. I, I'm waiting for Demon Hunter to start running the 5 mana 4-4 four, four that just deals 4 damage. <laughs> 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 just play full face Demon Hunter. Renew here into Radiance. Is Radiance the nut? You know which we knew, and if it's not good, just drop Galakron. This means that he has next turn Penance and Ooh. Kronk's heal as well. Kronk's yep. is active now. Very true. Oh, oh my god. So, so much <sighs> Why? Why isn't Demon Hunter just playing Wolf Rider this all? That's my next question. It's a great question, Raven. <laughs> Oh, Sigil Runner's been nerfed. It's a one drop that draws a card. What should I replace it with? Ready to ride. It's like done. Yep. Don't need to draw cards if your opponent's dead. Okay, is it better to take the heal here from Kronks or is it better to play the taunts instead? Yeah, either way, you start with Disciple of Galakron. This makes sense. You can pen it that as well. Right. Again, I'm trying to work out whether that's necessary or whether it's more important to actually still have removal available as well, but I guess with Time Rip, Shadow Madness, yeah, and Breath. Breath. Infinite, yeah. I think actually... You are to an 8 is probably good, right? Is I think 8 is the way to go, not heal. Because the problem is, there is no stabilization for RDU here. There's survival yep. for a limited yep. amount of time. Havel will kill him in just in, in not that long. So I think the AA not only being a taunt, but also opening up the potential they race factor for RDU you. is definitely yes. the way to go. Exactly. I think it's very important here to go oh, with the Kronks. To go with the Kronks taunt, as opposed to the Shield of Galakrond. For A, the race, but also the race is amplified so much by the fact that Pavel has to swing his weapon at something right. to get value out of a lot of his cards. Bladebound Adept is one of the scariest I cards in Pavel's deck impatient. right now, so he, Pavel has to take eight if he wants to use one of them. I was actually surprised. Yeah, okay. Pavel floated the skull there, and I was like, wait, you have one swing into Bladebound to kill off this 8 8? Seems good. Surely that's just perfect. And Pavel did end up going for it. I think he was just considering the skull and the impatience. But as we can see with, what, a guaranteed 8 damage next turn, if there isn't a taunt, then Pavel's looking pretty good with his opponent on 5. And this is what I was talking about, right? Like, RDU gained a ton of health, or a ton, a good amount of health, and mm -hmm. put a taunt up. Well, it's already gone. Pavel's not quite yeah. dead yet, but he's much closer to being dead than he would be if he just dealt 5, healed 5 for RDU. But RDU's not got access to any more heal now. No, he does have access to more taunt, though. What if he hero powers first to try and get Sandhoof? Well, I was looking... So, obviously, I really want this 6-6 six, six to go yes. face, just to set up the race. But there is a play where you trade and then just make the huge health taunt to play around your opponent's remaining charge with the, the Warglaives. Time is running out. But also the, the the time rip, or whatever way he wants to deal with it, or your death, mm -hmm. does open up the race more, right? It does, yeah. <sighs> That's... <laughs> Do you oh, see it? Wait, is it? No. He, yeah, it is. It is because he can swing again with the hero power, right? It is oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was looking, I was looking the one at the I was looking that at skull is. for some reason. Yeah. Oh, do you unimpressed with that? And it's so close. And again, Havel, I think, did do a very good job of just very early on saying, "Okay, none of this board mess, none of this, you know." Uh, uh, just tried to mess about clearing the board too much. It is just all face, 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 face. And it definitely helped with these draws, obviously. The metamorphosis, double glaive bound, uh, the um, the glaives themselves. But like I said, that's what Demon Hunter is capable of. That is not a new strategy that Demon Hunter draws a lot of damage from hand. And we see, yes, he got the Altruist at the end there, but he also had a skull that could have drawn him umpteen things that actually got through too. So we just see the power of just the raw damage from Demon Hunter. And I'm just waiting yep. for those Wolf Riders to turn up. 
<laughs> yeah, I, I will say Pavel wasn't really put in difficult positions as to whether to trade or go face. Right. There wasn't really any early minions from RDU that you had to make that decision with. Um, and RDU made the play that I did really like with the Apotheosis and the Sethic Veil Weaver, which obviously you have to trade with that. But at that point, you've seen one Apotheosis, it got used. So at that point, it's a lot simpler to just say go face, 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 because your opponent doesn't have the stuff to deal with. And then also on top of that, almost every minion that RDU played after that point was a taunt minion that Pavel needed to kill anyway. So yeah. Pavel never really had the chance to get confused and start sinking some damage into minions, um, even though a lot of the time in the matchup, I think that is very necessary. I think his his uh, game plan was laid out fairly simply for him, just by the way the draws panned out. I think RDU was the player that was far more on the struggle bus that game. Um, I think he navigated it about as well as he possibly could. Um, maybe a few turns uh, towards the end there can be looked at in extremely fine detail as to whether there was, you know, maybe, you know, half a percentage point here or there with a couple of right. different lines. But I think, personally, I think everything he did looked fine. Yep. Sometimes you just can't stop the raw damage output from Demon Hunter. So Pavel goes up to a 1 and 0 lead, taking down Priest and making that Priest win rate just that ever slight worse for the weekend, at least so far. But we are going to go to a break while we set up game number two between Pavel and RDU. We'll be right back. We are back and continuing our series between Pavel and RDU. Pavel taking a win with the Demon Hunter over uh, over RDU's Priest there. And again, we just see some of the uh, struggles that Priest has when even though it had access to removal, I mean, RDU had things to do in the first few turns of the game and in the mid-game, but it just wasn't enough to bat back the sheer aggression from Demon Hunter sometimes. But there's still plenty more to play out here as RDU not only still has his Priest, but his own Demon Hunter 
and Rogue left to battle against Pavel's Rogue and Druid. And I'm excited to see more of this Druid uh, be played, subtle, because I'm just generally interested to see if this is the evolution of the archetype or whether it is just a uh, flash in the pan. I'm just going to say it straight up. It's the latter. I think I think this deck is fun, but I, I don't really think it's got the, the power level it needs to really be competing with the, the other powerhouse decks here. And we're kind of seeing that reflected. Obviously, Druid has been mostly still just vanilla spell Druid this week, but Druid is the single worst performing class overall. It has a 21% win rate over <laughs> actually a pretty relevant sample size because it's almost ever present in APAC. The and we actually saw a ton of it in our early couple of days here in Europe. Yeah well so it's i think it's played 28 games overall at a 21 percent win rate that is shocking that's an appalling well, win rate for a deck in this in this tournament i think it's what we were talking about in our practice and preparation for this week and i think i was playing some druid uh, against you or Derek. i can't remember but i was saying like the only games i feel like i ever win with druid is when i get the absolute insane perfect openings right or just like the insane draws and that doesn't happen often enough to warrant it, at least in at least in my experience. And maybe the win rates reflect that as well. But we'll talk about Druid a little bit later on. Let's go into game number two here. Pavel will be on his rogue, and it is gonna be Rogue versus Priest. How do you stick to his guns? Yeah, we will move on because I want to talk about this matchup, but it is quite funny Thought because <laughs> on, on on the America's broadcast, um, TJ was saying that he just thinks Druid is the nuts because his experience with the deck is the exact opposite to yours. Like he just high he just high rolls every single game and just crushes people. So he just thinks Druid is the absolute stone cold. Nuts. Of course he does. Of course. TJ is yeah, such a high roller in testing, by the way. Like you guys would not believe. It. It's been two years now, and he's still just high rolling everyone in testing. <laughs> I uh, tell me about this matchup, Sol. What, what, what's going on here? Oh, what do you want to know? Well, I know it's what almost your favorite matchup to talk about, isn't it? It is one of my favorite matchups in the game right now. Yeah, because every rogue player just seems to have a different approach to how you're supposed to handle it from the rogue side. We've seen the Shaxi right. method of just value, value, value and actually try and go super late. And we've seen super all-in aggro versions. And we've seen versions where we've seen versions of the matchup where players have just shut their eyes and just said Mirazond isn't there. I'm not gonna play around it. I'm just gonna allow my big cards. Um, to go off, I'm just going to play Togwaggle for Wand because that's the good thing that I'm going to do and most of the time they don't have the mirrors on. Um, but I think there's just so many ways that this matchup can go down and I think it's been uh, entirely even so far across Grandmasters, which is pretty fascinating considering there is also a lot of disagreement into who is just favoured of the offset. Um, so yeah, I'm just, I'm just here for this matchup. Really. I just, I'm just into it. Learning experience every time we get to watch it. So far though, Pavel is just going to take down some of these minions that Ardu has managed to drop down with a vulture there somehow. Uh, but he does have the, the good mid game, right? He has the shield of Galakron, he has the flexibility to go into Faceless Corruptor if needed, and Faceless Corruptor I think a deceptively aggressive card in the a lot of the time, okay, yeah, it's great to trade down because you can you know get two 4-4s four with Rush. Sometimes you just make two 4-4s four full stop. and. Right. Then you've got two four fours to beat up your opponent with next turn, so it does get there a lot of the time. But I think with the shield of Galakron, Pavel might uh, go go for that one instead. Just to still have Pharaoh Cat in two faceless mm. as a back. I'm kind of into this faceless corruptor plan. It's a very annoying board state for Rogue to have to deal. Uh, for, sorry, for Priest to have to deal with on the other side. And he does already have, like, the bad minions on board to use it, right? He doesn't have to work right. for it, does he? So many. You are right, though, in that the Pharaoh Cat might be enough to just give Pavel security that he's just always going to get value out of that Faceless Corruptor anyway, but I actually really like it this turn. Yeah, and, and you might wonder, well, what do you mean he needs the Pharaoh Cat? Should a Galakron do that one drop? Yes, but he has Togwaggle in hand, which you'll want mm -hmm. that lucky for going forward. So, although it might look like there's always a one drop there, not one you necessarily want to commit the face to. Pavel, though, almost going through our thoughts process completely and yeah, ended up with that faceless corruptor play. And, and this is the point, right? It's not trading into anything. It's just converting a 1-1 one, one into a 4-4 four, four whilst playing an additional 4-4 four, four that turn. Very powerful. Yeah. And I also think it's very accepting of what is in my mind a fact, that you are the aggro in this matchup as the rogue. 
So he's oh, just doing the most aggressive thing he possibly can. But wow, Artie, you spotted this play so quickly. I'd actually like looked at this and logged it as like, okay, talking point for next turn when the turn switches over is RDU actually has a really cool response to this. And RDU, having not seen the play in advance, just worked it out so quickly. That is very impressive stuff. I will act as your scale, and honestly, useful because not only is it just removal keeps the board at least even, it was mm -hmm. removal without using any removal cards from him yep. to his side, right? He used a Kaj and a Lackey that he just randomly generated to remove uh, the threats on the board and kept Apotheosis, kept Kent, kept the time break. So, pretty, pretty good there overall from out of you. Yep. Time rips might start coming now. Not only is it just a good use of his mana, but also this Fate Weaver in hand can really allow him to do some broken things in the, the near future. Agreed. You know, he's one of the most likely next threats he's going to see at this point, based on the way that Pavel's curve has functioned. He's going to be High Baron Togwaggle, and he has the deaths in hand to deal with that anyway. But now, what kind of gamer is Pavel in this matchup? 100%. Yep, alright. Yep. <laughs> I knew it. Pavel cares not for the opinions of mortals or sheep. Uh, Pavel's like, no, one's a good card. I'm going to just keep playing one. Thank you very much. I'll have one of those, says RDU. I, I mean, you just, you just don't do it, Raven. <laughs> Pavel does. I don't. You're right. Uh, yeah, right yeah. Fair point. Fair point. Fair point. If you're doing it, though, you put your foot down, right? You do indeed, oh, yeah. I love it. It does, probably mean, well. it does probably mean that this one's now going all the way, because if Priest can draw cards in this matchup, then they're going to find all the resources they need to get all the answers. And, you know, it just so happens that they play a deck that is perhaps even more well-suited to Wondrous Wand than the Rogue is that plays it naturally, because they have, you know... They still have the Galakron, they still have the Kronks, but then they also have like Soul Mirror and Murazond in there that they can get for zero as well, which is just absolute insanity. Even just, you know, Time Rips, for example, they're still high cost. There's just a lot of high cost cards. Fate Weaver's high cost stuff to get some good value too. All right, looks like our uh, broadcast feed has got a bit of a spectator oh, bug here, but I can not. still see what's going on with my own spectator. Radio cast. Well, Pavel has cleared the board with a Goblin Lackey on the 3-2, and he's double-developed a uh, two Rush Lackeys behind that. He now has 11 damage on board showing down against RDU. RDU, of course, is locked out by that Boom Pistol Bully this turn. So he's got a pretty difficult choice to be able to answer this, but Shadow Madness, he's using to clear a 4-1 with a 1-1, and he's just going to rip his Wondrous Wand. Thank you. Finds Apotheosis, Sethic Veil Weaver, and Breath mm. of the Infinite for his zero cost cards off the wand. Zero mana Sethic Veil Weaver is uh, pretty exciting here. Okay, this is now becoming very difficult to radio cast. Zero, okay, ze zero cost Sethic. Zero cost Sethic deathed the Boom Pistol mm. Bully. He's now zero cost Apotheosis, his Sethic which has generated an inner fire and a holy smite for him at the end of the turn. I can see the Galakron looks like it's going to be played. It is, indeed. Okay, I can see on Pavel's hand that it did get played. Yeah, that is a full four stack. Hey, that looks great. Now we might have uh, Sethic Veil Weaver is correct, right, Sol? Four six and a one one? Thank the Lord. Yeah, yeah, we're back with it. Oh, I can hear the forever burning rope, so I'm sure we'll get that fixed in a second as well, as mm -hmm. we'll get the audio changed over. Apologies about oh, that, guys. Sometimes you get the odd spectator book, but I uh, sort of did a fantastic job of radio in that one. It's like the worst conceivable turn to have to radio cast <laughs> as well. It's just like a bunch of zero mana cards and a bunch of random spells being generated. Come on. Keep on your toes, friend. Yeah. Now Pavel just has about a hundred cards and a lot of stuff to do with him. And does that Van Cleef, although not active this turn, maybe unfortunately, so we'll get it down. But Van Cleef always feels weird in the late game for me, Sol against Freeze, just because there's so much 
spot removal and the uh, the soul mirror issue as well. Speaking of soul mirror issues, here it comes. But looks like Breath of the Infinite might be just more appropriate here to be able to clear up this board state. Smite as well. Yep, it's pretty Light good. His second invoke again. down. Drops his Fate Weaver now for the discount. Sorry, I'm still radio casting. This is not what I need to be doing. There's no play-by-play <laughs> -play in Hearthstone. It's not necessary. You can just see what's happening. Well, there goes my job. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't supposed to announce that, though. That was supposed to be a secret. Vincent Infiltrator is actually not a bad pickup either against Rogue. Mm. Just one of those annoyingly shaped minions that are a little bit tough to deal with. Yeah, agreed. It looks pretty solid here just to potentially fill out the curve, but RDU might be looking at just taking the damage straight up off the board with the Cobalt Lackey, taking the heal instead. Oh, yeah? Okay, making sure well, he's punks. dealing with any rush lackey shenanigans, I guess. Just making sure nothing can like value rush into his mm. convincing infiltrator. And makes Pavel just pay for it more if he wants to swing this weapon into it. Heals all the yeah. armor. Well, there's Crocs and Shadow Step. Whenever there's Crocs and Shadow Step, you always have to then consider is there just sometimes lethal? Not this turn, of course, but just in general. Yeah, I mean, he's still not that far off, right? Does look like he's gonna have to swing into this though, right? Because any minions he play don't actually help him clear it, and then mm -hmm. he'll just die. <laughs> but now this is the bit where Pavel can make a board of just little dudes, and suddenly, with the help of Crunk, Shall Step, Crunk, game could end suddenly. So the problem Adi you has is, does he feel he needs to soul mirror oh. a board like this? Pavel's just going all the way in. He cares not for the size of his deck. He just wants infinity things to do every turn. And boom! Head win back. Should he have ever done that the other way around and dropped the taunt on the Van Cleave? I don't think so. You're thinking about Soul Mirror? I'm thinking about just literally Soul Mirror, yeah, just that one mm -hmm. card. So Mirror does go down, but there is still a pretty large board state hanging around. As you mentioned, the, the double Kronks can make a mess. And even now, they're not moving this turn. The Kronks, but Pavel's follow-up with a potential flick onto this Fate Weaver. I'm not sure mm. if RDU has a natural Fate Weaver left in the deck. He does. He does, he does, he yeah. does right? Yeah. yeah. So, mm. you know, hitting Fate Weavers with flick is actually very powerful. And the Agreed. fact that he's got the oh, as well is just a cherry on top. Are you debating heal versus Kobold Lackey versus Penance here? I think all of them have merit. I think because of the threat of Kronks, I would like to be killing an additional minion here. Are you disagrees though? Yeah, even with a wand, even with everything the way it's gone this game, are you relatively short on cards again? It does have this uh this right, this, but, this sky to help. But also imagine if he'd drawn hadn't got a wand this game. He would have zero cards at this point, or one oh, card sure, at sure. this point. It's just the world of difference. RDU would just be absolutely scrambling, hanging on for dear life right now. Might not have found that soul mirror in time. Harvel, as expected, is going to drop the flick here. It's just a double whammy. Not only the apotheosis, but just the power of removing eight weavers. Yep. It's 
Not the most impressive board state that he's left himself with. That's the worry. So if Ardy, if you can find some way of seizing back more control this turn, those Kronks are going to start to get slightly less impressive. Here is the Murazond. Which is honestly pretty good this turn. Alright. Makes sense. Are you just going to clean up the vast majority and just dominate the board with Katrina instead? But the Devoted Maniac was played last turn as well as the Flick, right? So he would have got a 2-2 rush and a 4-4 off of his Mirazond. Been able to clear uh, yeah. up quite a big amount, large amount as well and got an 8-8 in play. This is, yeah, they're pretty similar. This one saves a Mirazond. I'm okay with that. It's going to be the Krunks clear. Looks like it. The problem is, does Pavel even have enough stuff left to win the game? Two cards left. What threats does he even have? Yeah. He might just have to Kronx clear and step it if he's going to do that. So at least he can go for like Kronx as an 8 8 the turn oh. after. Or could do it the same turn. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pull up Pavel's list, see if I can work out what his last two cards are. Darkness reigns. It becomes very difficult when there is infinity generated cards being played in a game of Hearthstone to work out what the natural ones are remaining. Oh, it's, an evil not too bad. it's an evil miscreant? Really? I think so. Raptor Golem's gonna be nice here just to take time. I'm not sure what the other one is. Yeah, seems good. It's because, you know, he's not going to get the rush effect, right? Yeah. Are you also taking a trade first with his own Skyvateer, increasing the chances that the backstab will go on the other side of the board? Making that a damage target that couldn't be targeted? Oh, it's the second Shadow Step, I think. The other card that's remaining. Yeah, I think, it's it's I think it's Miscreant Shadow Step. Super awkward board here for Pavel to actually deal with. There's nothing that's that clean. Mainly because this taunt's very frustrating. If there wasn't the taunt there, he could actually just uh, trade the three one attack minions into the Murzond, Krunks, and then just say eviscerate the 7 1. Mm. What? Nightmare. You know what's been lacking here for Pavel? Draconic well. lackeys. That's true. Right, he's, he's not got, he's not got any beef, and that normally does come from the Draconic Lackeys in the mid to late game. Especially since he's been Galakron for quite a while now. Alright, so he's going to use Betrayal to get through that annoying taunt I mentioned. Still, this is a lot of stuff. Mitt. Just to clear a board that didn't really cost RDU anything to make. <laughs> Thought Steel right on time. At least get himself a shadow step out of that. Uh, yeah, probably best not to get baited. Just develop the minions instead. How do you knows what he has to deal with? Oh, Celine, really good pickup actually, because if there is a draconic lackey into a big dragon, bang, gone, dead. Doesn't matter what right. it is, instead. Yeah, hero power, draconic lackey. Uh, and big evasive taunt. <laughs> yeah, like 7-7, seven, seven, big evasive taunt. Boom, Shadow Natalie of... Selene. Yeah. yeah, it's the only card that's playable there in this situation. Oh. Not what he was after, gonna go for a reroll on that one. 
Now he can't Shadow of Death his Miscreant back into the deck, so he's going to look for a big oh. drag at Waxadred! Waxadred Shadow of Death? Are we doing it, team? Is this it? Is this it, Raven? If anyone can do it, it's Pavel. He actually offsets some of the low tempo as well, because he can go Waxadred Rush Lackey Shadow of Death. Right. Can't surely this can't work. I mean, that's I don't a lot of wax believe dread, it. So. But Oddy, you has thought steel. <laughs> but it, but how does that work? Does he get the shadows and it does you get nothing? the card in your hand and you have to play it? I think that's usually how those effects work. Right, but it won't do anything because that card won't be attached to a minion, will it? It'll just be a shadow. Is that how it works? Well, I guess we'll wait and see. Mm. This Waxy Dread Rush Lackey is going to pay off huge, though, as I mentioned. Wow, no visible reaction from RDU. Just a yeah, furrowing of the eyebrows. eyebrow raise. Yeah, 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 those yeah, yeah. eyebrows. <laughs> okay, now a surprise. Now like a... Oh, yeah. what? He did seem slightly more concerned about the Rush Lackey than the Waxy Dread, which I think is an accurate reaction in that situation. Maybe a strange reaction, but an accurate one. Mm -hmm. Ah, this big dragon that's going to regenerate. That's fine. Rush Lackey! <laughs> no! Does that have Holy Ripple here? I want... Okay, I just want him to thought still because I want to know. Yeah. Probably looks like a Kronk, so isn't it? Yeah, it looks like a Kronk's Thought Steel kind of turn. Yeah. Alright, let's find out. Job done. Cast when oh, drawn, does, summon, it summon a Waxed Dread. Itself. Okay. Yep. I didn't know if the spell attached itself to the minion. <laughs> and now he's gonna just get more shadows? <laughs> Imagine. Oh. An identified contract. He does need. He needs to clear. He needs to clear the board. Oh, and he gets it. He got turncoat. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> and these one ones are doing to play around the Galakrond yeah. as well. And there's nothing he can do. Well, okay, he can shadow madness, shadow madness. a lackey, but still. Yep. They just come back again next turn, yeah. though. And there's an Eviscerate as well. And RDU is also out of cards. Or more close to, at least. With only two in in the deck. Yeah, he is fully invoked, though. So, obviously, that's important for the board clear potential. It's also important just for the, the claw being representing damage right, to Pavel's face. Right. I just mean fatigue. Might be, push him over the edge if he's facing yeah, down yeah, Waxadreds yeah, yeah. every turn. Yeah. It's got to be worth the Shadow Madness, right? I think so. Uh, the, like, heal doesn't do anything. He's already on full health. Yeah, and then like using the hero power for Galakrond. I think you'd much rather have a higher chance of killing a Wax of Dread. Okay, you just have to kill the two taunts. That's basically the middle ground you'll be happy with, as long as the two taunts go down. So you're saying? Oh! oh no! 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 That's not okay. And there's still lackeys for Pavel. Pavel's hero power, although my. Not quite as strong in the late game as the Priest Galakron. Still does stuff. If Pavel has things to do next turn, it isn't just raw wax a dread go. Running out of cards. <laughs> Look at Pavel. Oh, it's like, oh, oh, yeah. hey friends. Again. Call the boys. It's taking a lot of fatigue, but still, it doesn't matter as long as he holds a taunt here. This will activate the Eviscerate, not that he particularly needs it this turn. Togwaggle Scheme? No. Instant Hilfer, Hilfer what, what's right? Pavel gonna yeah. get now? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Why not? There's nothing out you can do, is there? Natalie, Celine. 
The Waxer Dread that's alive, but then you're still facing 21. Sorry, the Waxer Dread that has Taunt. And then Hubble push. fatigues for four next turn. Yeah. So he needs nine. Maybe. Oh, no. Shield of Galakron convincing Infiltrator, or Hero Power convincing Infiltrator? I will act as your scale. Oh no. This is a disaster for RDU. Yeah. Wax a dread, fine. Wax a dead. Just point. Alright. He's just dead to the Abyss, yeah. yeah. He's just, he's just dead on board. He's dead on board. Yeah, yeah he's, he's dead, just dead on board. Yeah. Wax the Dread 5-5. Five, five. Pavel ever the Showman, though, are going to rip out some uh, extra options here to throw a fireball. But yeah, the 5-5 five, five going into the Shield of Galakron plus the 3-7 attack minions adds up to a clean 21. And that was just daylight robbery there as Pavel steals that victory away from RDU. Look at his <laughs> smug little face! Look at him! Just another day oh. in the life of Pavel. Just another day. And and I don't even know what to say. RDU was in control of that game. There was pretty much, there was nothing. Pavel had nothing left, right? He had nothing. He was just done. Played all his cards in his deck. But sometimes you can play the cards not in your deck and win. And so he's just as disappointed as RDU, I think, on this one. Like... He was so out of stuff. So he, he picked up Shadow of Death. Cool. He recognized that was his win condition. That's not super high level. You're not getting credit for that at this level. Obviously, you pick Shadow of Death. It's the only thing that gives you a chance. From that point, he has to get a Draconic Lackey. He then has to play the Draconic Lackey and get something that's cheap enough to play and Shadow of Death in the same turn. Ideally, is cheap enough to be able to rush as well so you can save health and then has a big impact on the game. That's exactly Waxadred. It's the only one that has an impact in that scenario that fits all of those criteria. And even from that point, RDU still has the Galakron just killing both the taunts. And then he just smacks face. He just smacks face with Claw, he smacks face with Claw again, and Pubble's dead. Pubble would need to find Titanic Lackey at that point, or Draconid Lackey into affordable taunt on the following turn. So the outs are then reversed again back the other way. Whew! I just saw that Pavel had a plan and he pulled it off. Basically, is all I saw on that end of the side. So, as he has uh, done previously in the past. But that does put him very importantly at a 2 and 0 lead when the priest could have got, gotten the win, right? The priest could have done the job for RDU. And then suddenly we have uh, not mirrors, but we have the two rogues and then the demon hunter druid left over, which again, you could probably lean over to the way that RDU is actually then favored once he gets the win with that priest. But now. Maybe not the case with Pavel just on this Druid left. Most importantly, that matchup is just the best. It's <laughs> so much fun every single time. Such a great matchup. I love it. Let's just play that. That's all we get. Boar wants all warrior mirrors. I want all priest versus rogue. And I want all face on the mirrors. <laughs> okay. Something more on your level, right? Uh, I'll take Highlander. Hey, face on this hard deck. I'll take Highlander. Just to really... Spice on there. Let's get into uh, game number three, though. Pavel, of course, only having his druid left. Going up. Uh, oh! to hard to use demon tar. Oh, that you always draw the breath with this hand if you're Pavel. You just always draw it. Yeah, just in case you didn't, weren't here for the breakdown or you simply just were not listening to me, I do forgive you. But Pavel's druid deck is not the natural spell druid. It does have the bigger dragon package with regular Alexstrasza. Malagos in there, two Emerald Explorers, and then the double swipe, and as you mentioned, the Breath of Dreams. Some of the uh, sort of waves of buffs and, and, and some removal is cut for that, but generally it is just a bit of a beefier late game package. We're with you. Not having the big blowout boards a little bit earlier in the game, though, does make it more susceptible to a deck like Demon Hunter. It does. It does for sure. And having drawn all three big dragons, Pavel is at least going to be thankful that he has this overgrowth in hand, um, but without access to the big payoff with Breath to go alongside it. Uh, yes. Hey, all I see there, Saul, is Fungal got played and he didn't discard all his dragons. <laughs> so. Sure. There is that way of looking at it too. 
He does have removal, though, as well. He has that crystal power. Although, I think the more I see uh, crystal power against Dean Hunter, the more I've actually seen it used for heal. Yeah. Right. Just because right. a lot of the time, there's other removal tools where there isn't other heal in the deck. I will still fight. Ooh. Early game Kane against this deck. That's spicy, because normally the dragon taunts are what you've got to beat late game. Yeah, before I saw the draw... Um, I, I would have said, yeah, Kane, 100%. Like, you can't just not play a minion or just play, like, Tempo Altruist here right. and get, get you know, the majority of your board killed by another Crystal Power or a Bog Beam or a Wrath or whatever else. But having drawn Frozen Shadow Weaver, which was at least, like, a playable minion that turn, and then curving into Gladebound, Gladebound, and then having Kane to, to bust the big taunt if the Iron Bark comes down, it did seem appealing. How do you go in at lightning pace, though, and it... You know, this is on Pavel to deal with this, but he has hit. Oh! Oh my goodness. Uh, he coin... killed the cane as well, though. Yes! Coin, innovate, Malagos, taunt it, bog beam the cane. Oh, bog beam. Yeah, that's the card I was looking for. Hmm. He just has swipe in his hand after that. Okay, how is that not the play? I don't know. Honestly, so I'm just staring at the play that actually happened. Uh, okay, I guess okay, okay, okay. might be going for the Ysera play, right? No, 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 no yeah, yeah, no. Play. Yeah, yeah, I take it back. This might actually be smart because this way, so he secures himself with the crystal power anyway. This is the part I was missing that he can secure himself with the crystal power. So now he goes big taunt dragon into Alex Straza back to back one after the other to secure himself against burst over the top as well. Whereas if he did the play that I was suggesting, he'd have a whole turn gap where he'd have nothing to do, where RDU could play like Metamorphosis or whatever and just go to face to face and forget about the taunt. And um, so this actually does seem pretty good. I take it all back. How dare you, question Pavel. But the, the owner, play was so oh, cool! The yeah. owner of about six Waxer Dreads. <laughs> yeah. No longer the owner of a Ferrari, though, because it's ablaze in the center of an active volcano. Where he spends time with his pet wax address. <laughs> yep. Pavel has some deep and rich lore, folks. Ah, uh, yes. Well, thinking about this, he is never... Uh, never's a, a bit of a crazy word. He's never going to use that. Afraid of just... This health, right? So he doesn't have to actually Alex and then taunt the Alex this turn, does he? Correct, yeah. I think if anything, he should do this to bait some more damage being thrown at his face for like a two-turn right. setup for RDU and then use the Alex Straza afterwards. But th there would be, what, Altrius into exactly like double twin slice and, and you know, like yeah. craziness, wouldn't there, to actually end this game? Yeah, so if they hang on, two of these cards with twin slice, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six. Demons. So unless there's also enough damage to get through the unleashed and get damage to face, which no, there's no way. I don't think there's any non sculled hand that could right, right. deal nine to you right now. Demons. Demons. Hey! I got you, friend. Psychic forever doing a good job there, keeping this. Uh, keeping this. I found it at light. And after seeing a swipe as well, and the ton of removal, I think it's likely, at least on how to use vision, that, that it lives. Wrath swipe. Pretty insane. Pavel might greed a draw here off the wrath. Looks like that is what's happening if it's mm. being pointed there. And because he took no face damage, the same uh, sentence yes. is just again, right? He cannot die from nine if no none of the minions get to hit him in the face as well. Yeah, to an extent, yes. It's slightly different because there's less health on his taunt now and there's going to be a four attack minion left over in play. But there's also less cards in his hand. Rather than yes. Him, right? So the altruist yeah, isn't quite fair. the same. I guess the fear yeah. is a wall glaze, yeah. isn't it? That, for me, would be fear number one. Because I view as the health yeah. tank it. That's not it. Nope. You can get two from the Altrius. Extra two from the Boeing Power. That's four. Yeah, he's got to do it. 
means everything goes into the taunt, but he's got to do it. I do wonder if he, uh, if there was anything else he could have done there. This, this does leave Pavel in another rough spot, right? Yep. Blowfly Swarm is emphatically oh, no. not it, Chief. Eleven? Twelve now? Only twelve. Yep. Arbor here is going to need, like, overflow into Ironbark number two, something like that. Would just Ironbark number two do it? Not through a metamorphosis, I guess, if he just goes all face. Yeah, I think if RDU goes all face, that certainly cuts off just straight up Ironbark to an extent. And he can't trade, right? Not with 23 health. Yeah, it looked like he was thinking about it for a while. Oh. Fungal Fortunes, okay. That skips the healing. But it's still the card draw effect that he needs, and here come the dragons! Oh. Oh. Overflow as well now! How do you can't even look? The Alteris is dead on board to the Alex. He finds Ironbark now. Off this overflow, that could just be game over. Or if he gets a big taunt dragon out of one of these portals. Yeah. Oh. Breath of Dreams, no. More dream portals. More portals? <laughs> What's <laughs> happening? Moonfires? Oh, too many, too many. <laughs> Looking hero power as well will negate the 1 1 hit. Yeah. Also, with four. Five, six, six. The moonfire kept him alive. The moonfire yeah. kept him alive. Oh! Any damage! Oh. Any damage! Volpira, if it's ever there be. was it's a time be. for you to do something, it's now! Twin slice. Twin slice! Ends the game! Oh my goodness, I'm having a heart attack, Raven. <laughs> I like the, the side from like, oh, so unlucky <laughs> with that board. Also, if he could have even just taunted up just the, the lifesteal, it would have been insane there. But Pavel does take the loss there. RDU just about got there. And I think RDU is just mentally exhausted already at this point with the way this series has gone so far. Pretty incredible. He did just about manage it, and it does hang on in this series. Takes a win with the Demon Hunter, but maybe it's only going to get harder from here. I hope it doesn't get harder from here for us. I'm, I'm already at maximum right now. This is about all I can take this series. Oh, games that are this insane with like so much stuff coming down to you know randomly generated nonsense are just so hard to emotionally prepare for when you know like what's at stake for these players, and that's what's making these like so heart wrenching. Like every turn that goes past, like I'm simultaneously like rooting for Pavel to hit the nuts dragon every single time off his portal because I want Pavel to do well and being grandmasters because Pavel's great. Same time, exact same thing for RDU. I'm hoping that Pavel just gets dumpster dragons and just fatigues <laughs> himself and doesn't get anything. And then RDU just rips a metamorphosis off the top. You know, like, it's so hard to be in this position where, you know, you're friends with all of these people. You've hung out with them for years at events. And now, now here you are potentially with, you know, relegation spots on the line for all of these people. Just watching them watch randomly generated dragons come off the top of a deck over and over again. And that's the problem, isn't it? With the, the especially the caliber of player in the European region. Sorry, you know, last year with Orange and Fino. Like, who would have thought it? But then someone has to be relegated, right? And all the players here are really good, so it's going to hurt regardless of who ends up doing not so well and being relegated out of Grandmasters. But it is tough to watch, yeah. Now going to be going into the next game, though. Rogue, Rady, you, Pavel on the top on this Druid, and he has access to his ramp. And well, it's to hold the ramp actually looking at it. Just needs that card draw now. 
Yeah, this time he did hit the Breath of Dreams, which is a big, big difference. It's really like the reason why you play that deck, because you get that extra ramp possibility on your side. From nothing. Power. Essentially, the deck makes uh, Fungal Fortunes a little bit worse in order to make ramp more consistent, and then the, the end game scenarios are just a little bit different from the, right. you know, Savage Raw kill you kind of strategy that the old deck goes with. The old deck. I say that as if this is replacing that deck. It's absolutely not. That's nonsense. <laughs> Well, good luck, God bless, RDU. Yeah, even just Overgrowth coming out now is just going to mean that even just Alex Straza played is going to be a problem unless this is exact. You know, like, Pavel's overly worried about Ambush. But even just having to just drop this Alex Straza down might not be the worst plan in the world. And the Blackjack Stun and Nerf has an enormous impact in this matchup because there are multiple nine cost dragons in your opponent's deck. Hmm. Before, if your opponent just went Sarah Unleashed and then put Iron Bark on it. Alright, sure, Blackjack Stun it. Unplayable card in your hand for the rest of the game. Now, that's a little bit more of a terrifying prospect, right? To just give them the card playable again in their hand that they can just drop right. for, for the, the portals all over again. And even with Moonfires, it means that even Ma you know, Maligos isn't still great for the Druid, of course, but being able to mm -hmm. replay that is huge because they still have access to Moonfires and Hog Beams. Uh, I am back draws and so on. So far though, are you doing a good job of putting on some pressure? To help with this Van Cleef. Here's my five mana turn, over to you. Oh, you have nine? Oh, sure. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, fairly straightforward for RDU so far. We're just playing his on curve plays, but we see here just Alex Straza go. You is that the bog beam for the ambush? Trap. Safe for that. Yep. And now RDU just has to deal with an AT. I do not see the point in this iron bark whatsoever. You're not under threat. You what? know the number. One, you know, yeah. You know the things that deal with you here are flick and secret into blackjack stunner. Neither of which did putting an iron bark on your minion have any relevance at all. Now Pavel definitely on the back foot here. Didn't draw into any of his threats. Didn't get hold of the mount seller. No glowfly swarm. And also it just maybe seems like a most resource Pavel doesn't have anymore. Yeah. I don't. I I just... Sorry, carry on. I think even most importantly, no overflow either, what right? Was I thinking right. Of again? Overflow is when you run out of resources, there are the resources you want, but then there's also the card that draws you a ton of cards, which is maybe even the best one to get. But right. I'm not having access to any of those. Never mind. Here it is. Pavel. Malagos double moon Back fire locked and loaded now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do agree. Imagine if he had Iron Bark still. I, I, I didn't even think Pavel was going to consider that Iron Bark that turn, honestly. That's why I didn't even mention it. <laughs> right. On wings of evil. Oh. <laughs> I had it use like... Job's done. This is now so much pressure just coming back the other way, though. Is Pavel going to have to just use these Moonfires for tempo and removal instead? It's kind of looking that way. Might have to just fall back on a uh, Ysera Unleash board later in the game. Yeah, also he does have Glowfly. That's not to be sniffed at, even though there isn't tons of the support in this version. It's still a board of two twos. Sure. And post flick, he killed two of the bigger threats. How do you does have to commit a reducible sum of resources to turn this Maligos? And if he doesn't, he get swiped. Yeah, I like this though. The play deals with the, the big threats on board, and the flick is the bigger threat, even though it's a smaller minion. Um, because you could play Glowfly there and leave the flick up, and then well, Shadow Step just deletes you, right? It's the same thing if you go Maligos here and just Moonfire the two biggest minions. Shadow Step flick just deletes you. So. I think he did it a small way. Oh, another iron bar? A 
Okay, how much damage is there in place? Seven? So the rogue would need six? Okay, fine. Yeah, this is more of a health buff than it is a taunt buff for me. Well, again, like, the health just isn't relevant against how Rogue is going to deal with it. I think the only reason you taunt there is because you are scared of dying, and I think Pablo is allowed to feel scared of dying in that position. My big worry is now with both of his Iron Barks used, like, in my mind, I think Pavel has to play Ysera Unleashed to win the game from this point. But how is he ever going to find the time to do that when he's used both Iron Barks? Right. He's just not got the time to do anything worthwhile now, right? So again, if no. he spends this turn removing, even though this Fey Wing, which was a really good pick by RDU, by the way, again, mm -hmm. the, this evasive Fey Wing, uh, with this down, he can't really get rid of this. This is one of the turns where I think maybe a Glowfly Swarm would have been able to start fighting back from the board, but Pavel's on such low health that it doesn't matter, right? He can't do it. <laughs> Just rebuys his Alex Straza. Okay, cool. Again, swiping the oh, less geez. powerful minion so that there was no death to Shadow Step, but the second one there comes off the top anyway. Marvel's Druid is uh, falling apart right now, Raven. Oh. It is, yeah. And uh, maybe it was just a bit too much of a risk. Maybe this is the deck that's going to cause the havoc. You did mention earlier, Druid overall not really being the best performer in the world. And uh, we'll see how it continues in the next game as RDU suddenly evens up this series 2-2. Two and two. It did look like it could have slipped away from him a little bit earlier in the match, but he has managed to fight back. And now it is going to be... Uh, what is it? Priest versus Druid, which is the question now. And maybe... This Druid deck is a bit better versus the Priest than it is versus some of the other decks. Well, again, this is all very anecdotal because the, the big samples on this deck don't really exist yet. But a Boar, who pioneered this deck at least, I still haven't checked with him whether he did actually make it from scratch or whether he ripped it off a small sample size HS replay thing as he does sometimes. If someone knows that, then let me know or Boar can let me know himself. Um, but he was playing it on stream for like three days straight and he was getting tortured by priests. He was winning most other matchups, but it just felt like every single board he made, priest just made it go bye-bye over and over again and he died to fatigue the majority of the time. Or right. they just curved out. They just played like Sethic Veil vale Weaver Apotheosis and just had unkillable minions the entire game because the, the Druid removal just wasn't there to line up against it. So from what I've at least seen of Boar playing this deck, it feels like priest is one of the worst matchups. Okay, well, like I said, I've not seen it done too much myself. I did wonder whether just having the dragons and having the potential burst damage from Maligos would have been enough to just snipe a few wins there. Uh, but yeah, you are right. that it, Without maybe a Glowfly with no answer, which again is probably rare uh, because of that Breath of the Infinite, it, maybe there's just not enough damage to get there. And again, when you have to start paying mana for Bog Beam to maybe you know, peel back these Sethic Veil Weavers or any buffed minions is when you start to go a bit too slow as the Druid. So we'll be interested to see here and maybe this is the deck that's going to make Pavel fall over today because it was very close to just being a sweep there from Pavel, just almost out of nowhere with his lineup. Yeah, and it, it would have been an insane sweep as well in the way that the games went. Like the the Demon Hunter was pretty close to just the outright nut draw. He had early game minion, early game minion, early game minion, just enough to like get a bit of chip damage in, and then it was just damage. Every single card from that right. point onwards that he drew was just straight up damage, which is the dream draw in that matchup pretty much. And then just how ridiculous the rogue win was after that point as well. It would have been a ridiculous way to uh, to sweep the series. But it's come all the way back now, and RDU is trying to push these druid win rates into the dumpster even further now, Raven. Let's not forget... Pavel has had Fungal Fortune's Overgrowth in both of the games that he's played so far in his opening hand with this deck. Yeah, let's see how it plans out this time. There is the Breath of Dreams to help him get up there with the draw of the dragon as well. It means that he's going to be able to draw that card and maybe he does get the Glowfly down this uh, this game instead. Currently no Breath of the Infinite for out of you. No. He does have the option to just go Turbo Apotheosis here, though. Which I kind of like. Drop a 3-drop minion here, and then make it unkillable on the next time. I kind of like it. Oh, 
Now the knowledge that Wrath and Swipes there probably a little bit frustrating. <laughs> it might put a bit of a bump in that plan for Adi. Not really though, right? You're still going to make a 5 health minion next turn. Swipe doesn't deal with it. Well, you can just deal with it this turn. Sure. But I you also like might... Going. Might not be seeing like an overgrowth or something in your opponent's Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's still, yeah, it's, it's still a, a probably a net positive for RDU. But I just mean his plan of apotheosis in this minion is uh, probably going to go down the pan. Yep. Pavel double cycles. Oh! Looking for payoffs, looking for more ramp. There is a payoff with the Fungal Fortunes. There is that Sethic Veil Weaver now. He did just see Wrath Wrath come out from the opponent, but he does, of course, still know that there's a swipe in hand. So he knows this is dead if Pavel wants it to be. But again, I think you expect the Druid to just start ignoring your board at certain points and just progressing their own game plan. And yep, boom. Exactly. Death. Yeah, I guess I guess you do take plague, right? Because one thing you are afraid of is the Asera dragons. Mm-hmm. The other option I, I guess is just power word shield and keep cycling right now. Just protect your Sethic on board and try and pick apart the board by now and try and win the board early. I'm okay with that too. Go with the apotheosis as well, that's, and that's what the renew allowed him to do. Also, is just renew first. The apotheosis wouldn't have changed the fact that he traded into a two-two, and then just gave him right. the most uh, options going forward. Right. Hmm. Why does my deck tracker think he's playing rogue? Who are you? Yeah. Mm, he can play any class. That's true, yeah, and maybe that's why. <laughs> that's why. It's just like, well, you were rogue last time. Make your mind yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, the more I look at it, the more I do like the power chill pick here. Just make, just make it Pavel's mm. problem and not yours. <laughs> Sip of water. Nicely done. RDU. Proceeding exactly as planned. Double dragon discard off the fungal fortunes. Yeah, and I knew that was a problem as soon as Pavel cast it, even before I saw the draws, because Pavel just instantly looked to the side in a yep. upset fashion. <laughs> in upset. <laughs> in upsetness. Hey. It's okay. Wait, what? He gets another one, no problem. <laughs> Scam! <laughs> oh no! Is that why yeah, they so play this? this? It actually is, yeah. This this was a late <laughs> development on board stream. So the list started off playing um, Imprisoned Satyr to discount one of the right. dragons. Or decided that that was too meme and that you'd rather just have more big stuff to play because you have so much ramp in the deck. So he moved to just playing additional dragons to be able to Breath of Dreams more often. And there was Twin Tyrant for a while, there was a Nixia for a while, although I'm not sure if Bore ever tried that one, but some other people did. And then he settled on Emerald, Emerald Explorer, I think it was a suggestion uh, from his stream chat at some point. Just because, yeah, that's that's a thing that can happen. You right. can just get an additional Ysera unleashed. Now though, I'd use Hand looking mighty cheap. Now for that Fate Weaver. Open up some My good options from going forward there, but Pavel... <laughs> yep, there! <laughs> I mean, oh, fair's fair, fair right, Radu? Like, like you got to call that one a wash, surely. It's just funny because I just know exactly how he feels. <laughs> like, we've all been yep. there. Yep. Now it's actually just got a whole lot harder. Yeah, I'm flip-flopping. It's weird, okay, so this is, like, super situational, but because... RDU hit the Fate Weaver and hit the two invokes, one of which was off his first invoke. He invoked into Disciple of Galakrons to get his double invoke Fate Weaver discount. Suddenly, the Plague of Death would have actually been good because right. he would have discounted it to the point where it would be playable even if the, the Druid ramped ahead of him really far, which is 
the scary part of taking it that early is that the druid might just turbo ramp and just have a board full of massive dragons. Yeah, and, and like, it's not massive even right. playable. Yeah. 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 Pavel just face tank, <laughs> which he can of course because he does have a big backup here. Overflow and let's hold on here and see how many portals get procced, if any. The deck's big enough that there are those chances where it just doesn't happen. Never mind. That's yeah, one. it's not all that, that likely that it's more than two here. Ooh. Yeah, seems about right. Probably worth burning a card here, right? Because he has Malagos Moonfire. I don't think it's worth just dropping a Moonfire. Uh, to save one of the cards. Six of them are portals, though? He has another portals Emerald. Are pretty uh, good. He has another yeah. Discover Yasera card, though, right? Oh, you're right. Sorry, I'm so stupid. Just make more. Yeah, what, am I, what am I talking about? <laughs> look, you, you have to look for different options when you cast someone called Pavel. Because the, the weird outs often do happen. I think a card in Pavel's deck is better than a Moonfire right now. Uh, yeah. Oh, you wouldn't. He still wouldn't get it. No, no, no. Okay, yeah. In this case, yes. You never, you never play the card. I think the Moonfire is probably better than a random dragon in his hand from the Skeletal Dragon. Right. I hadn't I hadn't processed the situation properly. So yeah, there was no way to avoid burning uh, more cards off the top there. But yeah, I'd rather have the Moonfire than a random dragon. I wonder. This makes sense. Apologies. You think this is your time? Wait a minute. Okay. My hand is too mm -hmm. full. Liking it. Get yourself high on resources. This isn't the rogue matchup, but. We see this is the kind of thing that Priest needs to do. They're so limited on card draw that generally, if you're going to Murazond, you want to be Murazonding for resources. Does mean now he can... RDU can burn either his Soul Mirror or his Galakrond. That happens one out of six times. Which would be a huge loss for him. He's probably going to need one or both of those to be able to survive this onslaught. And that was the, the big sort of question mark for me uh, with the Morrison play. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying you should have done it. But, and sometimes you can be okay with just burning cards for uh, in a swap for high value. But the fact that some of those cards are potentially game-winning for RDU scares me. I wonder if this turn's just a good blowfly. fly. He still hasn't seen any Breath of the Infinite yet. So I think he just needs to play removal and card draw. I think Glowfly Swarms are probably just not cards from Parvel's perspective. He needs to spend all his mana every turn on drawing cards to get big dragons and clearing the boards that RDU is making. That's fine. He'll let that one go. It would have been useful probably at some point. But he's probably okay with it. Yeah, I guess my point with the Glowfly is you can make a board like with its half small dudes and half big dudes, which is what he struggles with the most, at least. Mm. Whereas this, you know, if there is just a spot removal for your series, like super behind anyway. My blood be born again. Yeah, the problem is if you spent five on Glowfly there, like you're, it's essentially when he's this far in his deck, he's so likely to have Breath of the Infinite, right? That you're trading five mana for three mana. So he, Pavel wouldn't have done all the stuff he did that turn in turn of, terms of drawing cards, which obviously he didn't hit portals on, but he could have done, and also removing his opponent's board. So he'd just be facing down more pressure, and then RDU would just be able to blow up his board with a with a Breath of the Infinite. Yep, Malagos for Tempo, has a triple spell turn here, pretty strong, big swing on the board. Time Rip is available though for RDU. Now there is no reason to Iron Bar this, can we all agree? Okay, good. Hmm. We don't have to agree 
on anything. It's mainly an important travel breeze here. It's just going to eat the time rip. Suddenly, maybe go against that slowly. Pavel is just being starved of resources here, as there are seemingly answers for everything that he does. Yep. Yeah, this is win condition number two, as I talked about. Well, I, I think this was the first one. I think this was win condition number one, where he just kills everything that comes out, and Pavel just fatigues. I think win condition number two was the curve out with Apotheosis and beat them up plan. There is also a good Mount Cell turn here. There is. And again, I talked about awkward shaped again. boards and everything. And well, Mount Cell normally does make a weird shaped board just to the variation on the three cost beasts, right? Yeah. Problem is, it's like Mount Cellar, Innovate, Overgrowth, Excess Mana, which draws a card. And then you start drawing portals. And then you don't have space on your board because you have right. a bunch of 1 1s instead. Uh, We're going for the Overgrowth chief. first. Save the Innovate just in case. Mm, nope, that's, that's 11 mana. Oh, you mean literally right. overgrowth first before no, no, the right, mount the right. mount seller? Okay. Okay. Because okay. you could innovate it out, right? Yeah. Yeah, you could I'm go overgrowth it's probably, first, it's waste, then innovate it? the mount seller. But yeah, yeah that's yeah. a lot of spells that you're not exactly, playing with your yeah, mount yeah. seller at that point. But for chance of, of you know losing a dragon, it's probably overkill. Mm -hmm. uh, your Sarah portals cost nine, by the way, just to cover that interaction. So you can get them in your hand, but they cost 9 to play to summon a random dragon, which is very garbage. As Thought Steel is drawn. Yeah, and this is a problem here, isn't it? Because Havel's board has just been completely picked apart almost effortlessly because RDU had access to so many cards on the overflow, right? Yep. If RDU didn't have so many cards, some of this board probably sticks. Now, although technically some of the board did stick, I'm not talking about this stuff. <laughs> yeah, same situation, right? I, I used the explanation before of he drew five cards with Overflow. Imagine if he didn't. He would have zero cards in his hand right now. Yeah. It's never quite that simple, but it's a good <laughs> way of looking at it! No. Not like this! No! No, no, no! Not like this! Okay, if RDU doesn't get a turn here, like, I'm actually done. You're on your own for the end of, for the rest of the day. Rest of the day? We're only yep. in match two? <laughs> yep. I came back for you for the priest mirror. Nos Dormu bug, don't do it to us. Don't hit us like this. Okay. There is a turn. RDU is about to get the news that that was not the last time he saw a dragon in this series. <laughs> no, Raven. Not like this. And the problem okay. is... Okay, he still has Soul Mirror. He still has a Soul Mirror in his deck. Yeah. But a lot of dragons are weird shapes, aren't they? Yeah. So should he have took Breath of the Infinite then? Go. Well, I guess he just doesn't know. Yeah. Yes, that's fair. We can't assume our DU yeah. knows that Pavel's going to do ridiculous <laughs> yep. things. Yup. <laughs> oh. oh my. Oh my, oh my, oh my. Uh huh. There's breath. Okay, did get the breath. Thought still does nothing. Pretty sure RDU does not want nine mana portals in his hand. Just... He has no way of drawing cards to find the Soul Mirror any more likely. I think killing the Aeon Reaver, testing out the waters with the hero power, and then just dropping Kratria in a Muerto is more than good enough this turn. Well, so I'm thinking if you don't kill the 4 4, like you no, you actually never kill the 4 4, right? Because he's going to get a full board of minions the next turn anyway off is the draw. This is whole, whole deck. deck is portable. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, sorry. I thought you had a card uh, left. There's yeah, a yeah, chance, yeah. right? With one card left, nothing gets drawn. So you want to just go face and set up okay, yeah, That instead. makes sense, yeah. I, I didn't realize they were all inside. Uh, yeah. Alright, what you got for us, kid? So Pat's really big. looking for the taunts, right? That's big. Oh! oh. I'm 
and targetable pretty good too. Good explorer comes to me. My cards. I seem to have lost all my cards. I seem to have lost all my cards. Uh, just the best emotes. She's <laughs> the best. Best character in this game. It would game be the best distance. if she said at the end of a game, you seem to have lost all your health. It's just like the final comment, and you'd be like, what? Come on! I know I've lost. Let's get the heal next shot his head clan, which will help him out a good amount. Is it Soul Mirror or Bust? Is it that simple? I guess he's not dead, right? He's not dead, dead. Can you explain to the audience what the difference between dead and dead, dead is? Well, dead, dead is your hero is exploded. Dead is you're waiting for that to happen. Thy blood be born again. Generates a dragon? Generates a Murazond? Okay, does that do anything? No. Alright, calm down. Huh? Stop getting so excited, Raven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, blame me, Sol. That's what I'm here for. Thank you. Okay, okay, okay. I think he's made it. I think he's made it. Holy Ripple and Breath of the Infinite is picking apart enough here alongside penance as well you can face tank and penance yeah oh, no, shadow no, madness would also have been a, a nutty draw that turn if you didn't get the soul mirror the shadow madness was the next best thing for the primordial explorer okay seriously very genuinely, hats off to RDU for picking apart that turn. Under this much pressure, after everything he's had to put up with this series, finding that clear as effectively as he did so, well done, my friend. Go and have a lie down, because jeez, do you deserve it. If you stream after this, you are a monster, okay? I would be in bed hiding under the covers immediately. Well played, sir. Yeah, great job there for RDU. And I just wanted to just stop before you started making the speech. I was like, hold on. Pavel's still in the game. Is there a way <laughs> how? that he can make how? this happen? <laughs> it is Pavel. I just wanted to double check. Yeah. But you are right. Really uh, well played there from RDU. And um, although, again, maybe visibly wasn't, say, keeping his cool. Definitely kept it cool with the plays. Because even in the craziest of circumstances throughout that series, uh, RDU was continually putting himself in the strong spots there to actually win the game regardless of what was going on on the board there. Well, you know, the Druid did let him down in the end, but uh, he, uh, he, you, you say one thing about Pavel, it's that he's very entertaining to watch almost no matter what. That's one way of putting it, yeah, I think. <laughs> but again, you know, I apologize. Actually, no, I don't apologize. Screw you. I'm going to be like this for the last two weeks. Like, this is just what it means when you get to the end of Europe, when you're seeing, you know, these players that if you don't know on a personal level, you've at least been following them. Now I have for two years throughout this uh, this league format in Grandmasters. So when in Division B, it's so life and death for all of these players and they have to deal with those sort of situations. And then when they're coming out of it with a plum as well as RDU did there, keeping his call cool admirably, I'm going to be freaking out a lot, okay? Like, that's just something that you're going to have to deal with. I'm sorry. No, no, not. again. No, I take it back. Stop being sorry for being sorry. I'm so confused right yeah. now. Let's take a look at the schedule and see how today is ticking along as that was our match number two of the day there. We have plenty more coming up. It is going to be the Tights versus Zim match up there coming up for match number three. And then we have Casey, Bosden, and Viper and Kalento match up today. So still plenty of Hearthstone coming up. But I'm looking forward to see Tights and Zim play. Maybe Zim can uh, try, try and uh, dig himself out of this uh, rough situation he's put himself in. Yeah, and he is the only player in Division B who only currently has one win on the board, which means another loss here could have incredibly dire consequences for him based on how the rest of the games then break down because he could see, a, for example, a two-game gap open between him and a player that he needs to overtake to not be relegated, but he might have already lost to that player, so be losing head-to-head right. -head tiebreakers, at which point he'd only have two games left to play, he'd only be able to match their score, and would then lose on that head-to-head -head tiebreakers and be relegated. So it's something that will break down in more detail, perhaps not on broadcast, but shortly afterwards, and you can follow our Twitters and Hearthstone Esports and whatever else, we'll put that information out on if we can, but you know, things could get very serious in Division B before the end of the day. Yeah, and we are going to continue on with these matches as we have Tice versus Zim coming right up. The two Warriors are banned out. That leaves Demon Hunter, Rogue, and Priest for Tice. And then Warlock, Demon Hunter, and Hunter for Zim. 
So again, just a mixed bag of lineups we see. 